Hi, to make fabulous gluten-free goods in your kitchen, you need to know a little bit about the flours and starches and binders used in gluten-free baking. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the different binders that I use and the role that they play. I've been teaching cooking classes for 10 years, so I know that you can make the foods that you love in your own kitchen. So let's talk a little bit about the science of gluten. So gluten, uh, the protein strands in wheat are called glutenin and gliadin, and they're wrapped around the starch molecules. When water is added to them, they unwrap and create a network called gluten. So in gluten-free baking, we're trying to replace that or create that structure with other um, products like these binders. So all binders, I'm gonna talk about uh, xanthan gum, guar gum, and psyllium husk powder, and they all provide structure in baked goods, but they just have a few little differences that's important for you to know. So xanthan gum, I buy like this. Uh, it's a tiny, very fine powder. I store it in a spice bottle. I've got xanthan gum, uh, the label on the top and on the bottle. I also put this tip here when I first started, quarter teaspoon of xanthan gum per cup of flour, of gluten-free flour. So that's just helpful to learn. As you bake more, uh, if you do, some breads might require more than that, but that's a good, uh, a good way to remember it. Another little tip about xanthan gum, when I pour it on, it's always a tiny small amount. So when you're mixing it in your flour, just um, sprinkle it over your flour mix before you whisk that dry mix together to make sure that it's evenly combined. So that's xanthan gum. Um, it's commonly used in uh, anything from salad dressings to toothpaste, and it also provides a longer shelf life on your baked goods. Guar gum, I have actually never used. I use this resource from America's Test Kitchen. They're fabulous cookbooks. Two of them, the How Can It Be Gluten-Free cookbook and volume two, How Can It Be Gluten-Free. They do more uh, testing than any home cook could ever do. And so lots of my information has come from their experience. And they say that guar gum is, uh, gives a little bit of a more starchy taste but it can be used interchangeably. They give uh, suggestions of how to use it interchangeably if you can't tolerate xanthan gum. And, uh, but they prefer the xanthan gum, so I've just stuck with that and haven't tried the guar gum. But guar gum is uh, high in fiber, it's sold as a laxative, and it can you know, use, be used quite effectively in gluten-free baking. The third one is psyllium. You might know that name as well from cereals. It's uh, also a laxative. It has a higher viscosity, so it binds with water more effectively than either the guar gum or the xanthan. Uh, it makes a stronger structure, so it can hold lots of gas and steam, which is helpful in yeast breads, keeping, uh, holding those bubbles and keeping uh, a structure. Another thing to pay attention to is whether there is a binder in the flour mix that you use. I make my own gluten-free flour blend. I'll put a link to that below, along with links to the other things I've mentioned and I don't add uh, the, any binder to it. I just add the binder based on what I'm making and how much I want. So that's how I make my recipes. But it's important for you to know if the flour blend that you're using does have a binder in it, that might uh, affect how you're uh, adding, how much you're adding and how your, um, your finished results are. So this is uh, number six in my 12 part series of uh, videos on gluten-free flours, starches, and binders for gluten-free baking. I'm Cindy, the Everyday Gluten-Free Gourmet, sharing tips and recipes from my kitchen for more everyday cooking in yours.